They will cut off our name from the earth. So when all the Canaanites wanted to cut off our name, why did they want to take away our name? Because when you take a man, man's name, you took away his culture. You took away his identity. You get took away his connection to his ancestors. You cut him off. You cut his roots off when you take a name off. And when we first came in Canaan, the first thing they said, them seven families of Canaan, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Omarites, the Hittites, they wanted to do what? Take away our name. Read that again. For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land. All the inhabitants of the land of the Canaan. Shall hear of it and shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth. And what would thou do unto thy great name? What you going to do unto your great name? So the name we had was a great name. That was his name. That's the name he gave us. Then we go to the book of Psalms 83. According to Psalms 83, the first verse, Keep not thou silence, O Elohim. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O Elohim. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. And that's something I was naive when I first started studying the Bible. I couldn't imagine the Most High having enemies. How can God have enemies? Who's fool enough to be an enemy to the Most High? I figured everybody wants to serve the most high. I figured y'all didn't have no enemies. I just figured some people didn't know nothing about them. But I figured once I learned the scriptures and teach them about them, they would be ready and willing to serve him. And the only reason they did serve because they just didn't know. I didn't know. And I was so naive to realize that when I learned the truth and started trying to teach this to my people, that they would resent it, that they would hate me because they hate the most high. I didn't know the amount of abuse that I would go through by trying to teach about Yah. And I did it in a subtle manner. I always said, well, this is Christ's father. This is the one he said was greater than him. They still rejected him. This is the one that he said we should worship. They still rejected him. And a man asked me from California this morning, he said, what are we going to do at least? I said, listen, the people don't want to serve the Most High. They don't want to serve him. If they would, if they, if they wanted to, they would be serving him, but they don't want him. They rejected the Most High because when his people hear him and hear his word, they're going to do what? They're going to go to it. They're going to go towards that direction. And when you first heard word that y'all don't want nobody else above him, was that a big fight? Wasn't a big fight. Well, that's good. I didn't know that. I didn't know that he said he's the only one and he didn't move well, there. That's good. I just have to change my thinking. I didn't know that. But it wasn't nothing where you fought it. But do you know there's people that are fighting this? Oh, yes. And fighting Almighty because they hate him. And that reveals the truth of their scripture. It says, For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. What kind of counsel? Crafty. They're very sagacious. They have taken crafty counsel. And when you want to destroy the man, the first thing you do, take away his name. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That the name of Israel, that's the main thing they had. The first thing the creator said he's going to do when he returns to earth is do what? Destroy everybody that's eating pigs. First thing he said he's going to do, but the first thing that these enemies of Yah in the book of Joshua and the Psalms, 
not only the Canaanites, but here the Edomites and the Ishmaelites, the first thing they proposed in their heart is that Yah said they were crafty. He said they were cunning. He said they were sagacious. He said the enemy shall do what? For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty count. Notice, don't minimize that. Because I know you think it's nothing, but Yah said it was very crafty. It was very, very cunning, very sagacious. They took crafty counsel against thy people. Against your people. And consulted against thy enemies. And they have consulted against us. They have said, come. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. Now, how you do that? That the name of Israel shall be no more in remembrance. And you know most Israelites don't call themselves Israel. Did you know that? Most Israelites that know they're Israel, they change the name. They didn't change it to Israel. Did you know that? We wonder a few communities when they talk about the house of Israel in the United States, you know who most people think of? You. You know who they should be thinking of? All of our people. But they got names for their camps. Betcharin and Habudurin and Dubidu and everything except the children of Israel. And they got that from the Gentiles because that's what the Edomites do. They're not, where's Israel's glory? Where are you showing your connection to him? You understand? Go to Psalms. Go to Isaiah 41. Like I said, I was... I was astonished when I was reading the few people that the Almighty identified as his servant and as his people. But look what he says in the book of Isaiah, 41st chapter, the 8th and 9th verse. But thou, Israel, art my servant. That's, that's something he only did with Abraham, Jacob, Noah, Job, David, and he called you by that name, servant. That's one of the greatest blessings that y'all could extend to us, calling him us. Not one of us, not just him, not just you, but he called us his servant. But thou, Israel, art my servant. You are my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. All right. And then it says in the 19th chapter, 19th verse, rather, excuse me, of the same chapter. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the cedar tree. I'm sorry, I'm in Isaiah 5, 42. Let's go back, let's go to 42. Now we get to the 42nd chapter of Isaiah. Notice what it said on the first verse. Behold my servant, whom I uphold. Now my who is he talking about? How do we know that? 